Juan Francisco Estrada scores a very, very close unanimous decision over Carlos Cuadras. And pretty much the fight of the night. Um, you know, I expected this to be the show stealer, and I think it definitely was. Um, fantastic two-way action. Guys that were pretty much evenly matched. Um, although, I guess some people kind of differ in that assessment. Um, I see a lot of people feeling like uh, Estrada pieced up. Cuadras gave him the boxing lesson. I see a lot of people feeling like uh, Cuadras... Um, you know, was too quick and uh, too athletic for, for Estrada, and he built up enough of a lead that even Estrada's late surge just wasn't enough. And Quadras was still answering back in a lot of those rounds that um, a lot of people were giving to Estrada. Uh, personally, I scored it exactly like the judges. I had it um, 114 to 113, six rounds of six, and the knockdown that Estrada managed to score wound up being the difference. A fantastic knockdown, too. That was, that was a timing knockdown, you know. Estrada's not a big puncher. Um, he's a sharp puncher. He's an accurate puncher, and it's that, that sharp accuracy and uh, that timing, that just that technical brilliance that Estrada has from a guy that you know has probably obsessed over this sport, over how to, how to punch, over when to punch, why to punch, etc., um, that, you know, that master craft boxers are truly made of. You know, the, he's, he's got that James Tony in him. He's got that Terrence Crawford in him. I guess to use a more a recent <laughs> Mastercraft-esque boxer, Mikey Garcia, another guy. You know, he's, he's one of those guys that he, he just times you, just brilliant, brilliant timing. And he doesn't even have as much power as actually the, all the three of the guys that I named. And that's, I think, all the more impressive of, of the fact that he's able to hurt a lot of these guys that he fights. Um, and in spite of the fact that he has, like, reasonably brittle hands, he's broken his hands God knows how many times now. And, uh, you know, that's a big part of the reason for... The fact that we haven't necessarily seen him in a lot of high-profile fights in the last few years. Uh, the other side of it is because of the fact that a lot of fighters were hesitant to fight him. Um, you know, maybe even Chuck Lethito included in that uh, with regard to their rematch. And he wanted to be paid very, very handsomely for that rematch. And I don't blame him, actually. I mean, honestly, I don't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call that a duck by any means. Um, you know, to, you, you fight in the, the best level of opposition and a fellow true pound-for-pounder, a fellow pound-for-pounder. And I'm very comfortable in saying that. Estrada is as good as any fighter in boxing, pound for pound. Technically speaking, he is as good as anybody. Anybody. Name the fighter, he's just as good, if not better than him. Uh, he's, <laughs> the timing is, is like, a, like clockwork, man. Like a, like a clock that's you know, based off of the radars and the, the sun and the stars and the moon. <laughs> it's just pinpoint accuracy. Um, he did, I thought he did... Um, Look a little bit rusty in the early rounds against Quadras. You know, Quadras definitely got off to a good lead. Um, he's a very tricky fighter, a very quick fighter. He's an improvisational fighter. He's like a Gamboa, like a, like a Roy Jones. Uh, he comes from that school of boxing of, uh, you know, catch me if you can, basically. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot and uh, look flashy and hit you with shots that you don't see coming and his, throw shots at angles that you wouldn't expect me to throw from. You know, he's a creator. He's an artist in there. He's, a, he's like a jazz musician, like a, you know, like a freestyle rapper going in there and just uh, creating on the fly and just uh, letting, letting things fall where they may, basically. And he kind of just works it out on the way, on the, on the go. And whereas that worked um, against virtually every opponent that he's ever fought, um, and including Estrada for the, for, for the early rounds, um, you know, worked against Risa Kit, Sarang Vasai, worked against Chocolatito. Um, once Estrada was able to start kind of timing him, it started to fall apart just a little bit, at the, at the very least. Um, once it got into the middle rounds, Estrada managed to get into a rhythm, managed to kind of shake off any rust he might have had of, you know, not being able to fight, you know, truly elite competition the last couple of years from the injuries and, you know, people avoiding him and such. Um, and he was right in there with Quadras. A lot of great back-and-forth action. You know, you could tell that these were two guys that really didn't want to let the other get an advantage, you know. They, they didn't want that one shot that the other guy just landed to turn into a combination that he landed and then to turn into, oh, now he won the exchange or now he won the round or now he's winning the fight. You know, the, the, you could tell that was on the minds of both of them, especially Quadras. You know, Quadras tends to have a little bit of that, that sense of urgency about him and he, he wears it on his face. You know, Estrada's a lot more poker face. You wouldn't, um, you wouldn't see him in a panic even if he was. <laughs> with, with Quadras, you know, he's, he's one of those kind of wear your emotions on his sleeve type, type guys. Um, but even then, uh, you know, Quadros was fighting back um, pretty hellaciously in spite of the fact that Estrada started timing him in the mid-rounds. Um, later rounds, there was a lot of good back-and-forth action as well, but at that point, it seemed like Estrada was the one 
that was kind of beating Quadras to the punch, and it was Quadras that was the one trying to play catch-up or trying to play get-back, basically, you know, like, oh, you're trying to just hit me with a combination, i got to try and answer back. And sometimes those answer backs weren't as, uh, as clean or as um, snappy as they had been earlier in the fight because Estrada was able to defend against them better. You know, he was able to time them, um, time the incoming fire and be able to defend, block, dodge, weave, etc. And even also catch and counter and things of that nature. And, uh, you know, just uh, made it work for him. Um, managed to score that knockdown late in the fight. And, you know, just like kind of uh, round five, six, seven, we're a bit um, on the toss-up side. Um, rounds 10, and, or excuse me, rounds 11 and 12 were been on the toss-up side too, you know, Quadras fighting back, um, as he's known to do, you know, in the championship rounds especially, even as he did against Chocolatito, where he was kind of outlasting Chocolatito stamina-wise, uh, but he may have, I guess, left a couple of rounds, uh, get too close and get away from him, as far as the judges were concerned in that fight, um, and uh, Estrada managed to pull pull off the job, man, it was really funny when, uh, when Michael Buffer read the announcement, and said, said that it was Quadras, and you know, and that's the thing. I wasn't mad at the decision. Um, you know, I know a lot of people initially were uh, when he said Quadras at first, and then they found out that it was actually Juan Francisco Estrada when the freaking commissioner ran in the ring. He's like, no, <laughs> no, Estrada won. <laughs> it was pretty amusing. It was pretty amusing. You know, people saying that he pulled a Steve Harvey. And so I even said that he pulled a Steve Harvey. But um, that's, that has happened in, in boxing before. You know, sometimes um, the cards or the ring, uh, who actually wins, get mixed up between the two guys. I remember actually even about 12 years ago, when um, Marco Antonio Barrera fought Rocky Juarez the first time, it was a, at first it was announced a draw between the two of them, but I guess they made some sort of a mathematical error, and it turned out that, um, that Barrera actually won by, I think it was majority decision, um, if not split decision. It was one of the two. But, you know, sometimes there's errors in the announcing and such like that. Um, so Estrada is, the, is now the WBC number one contender, the mandatory for Suiza Ketsurangvasai, who managed to um, defend his title successfully against Chocolatito in the rematch. Um, is he going to get that shot? Maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, Suiza Ket is looking towards uh, a big unification, which would, I mean, if the WBC would allow that to happen, they might, if, if Suiza Ket goes after it, you know, and they, they make that fight, the WBC may strip him and uh, basically just hand over the belt to Estrada, but... I don't know, the WBC, you know, they're, they're kind of here and there with it. Sometimes they, they hold strict to their rules, sometimes they don't so much, especially if the money is, is big enough. <laughs> so who knows, maybe they'll make um, Estrada, maybe they'll make Suiza get the Diamond Champion or the Emerald Champion or the, the Weechel Champion or the, the Money Champion or the, the M150 Energy Drink Champion. M150, you know, that's his big sponsor in Thailand. Good energy drink too, by the way. You know, if you ever get a chance to try it, you should. But, um... Yeah, Estrada uh, absolutely deserves his shot. You know, he's been uh, he's been kind of underground hype for way too long, way way too long, man. Uh, he should have been a, a household name, a mainstream name um, from that first fight with uh, Chocolatito, which was shit. I think it was in 2012, man. It was just over five years ago now. Um, he absolutely deserved uh, to to have that big name way back then. You know, but at least at the very least, um, you know, better late than never. Um, he's still relatively young, 27. You know, he still has, uh, I think, uh, yet to have his greatest achievements in the ring. Even though he already has a, a couple of really nice ones. I mean, um, the, the victory over Veloia and Melindo in Macau, um, definitely very, uh, very impressive stuff. Especially considering um, what Veloia had done before and what Melindo has done since. Um, you know, of course, the the fight with Chocolatito completely. Dominated and destroyed Segura and Tyson Marquez. Um, yeah, man. And uh, this win over Quadras uh, definitely proves uh, a little bit more in the technical sense and the pound for pound sense. You know, this is, um, I mean, I guess technically it's his third weight class because he fought Chocolatito at 108. But, um, you know, back when he first turned pro, he was kind of a floater. He just kind of fought at whatever weight would, uh, I guess, be most efficient for him to get the opponents at. Although flyweight was his general preferred one. And now he's at super flyweight. You know, he, I think uh, he's not small for the division, but he's not big for the division. You know, I think this is really his proper weight. And um, you know, should he become a champion, I think uh, we could see Estrada reign, reign for a pretty nice amount of time, um, unless maybe uh, da Daigo Higa at flyweight, who looks to be a, a bit of a phenom in his own right, um, not unlike uh, Chocolatito, Inoue, Suiza Kate, etc., um, rises up and maybe uh, gives him a bit of a challenge. But 
He, uh, he had, definitely has a, a stiff, stern challenge ahead of him in Teresa Kett. And very good fight to me. Very, very good fight. Uh, potentially a mini Pacquiao versus Marquez, albeit maybe with a little bit more skill, honestly. Because um, maybe not uh, like in Pacquiao, Marquez 3 and 4, but, um, you know, definitely like I guess maybe between 2 and 3 and stuff. I, I could see some similar things happening between Estrada and Suiza Kett uh, with the, just the kind of the way the styles mesh, incidentally. Um, although I think Suiza Kett's a little bit, a little bit craftier, a little bit grittier, a little bit dirtier than and Pacquiao is, and I think Estrada is a little bit, um, I think, I just think he's a little bit more varied than, than Marquez is, he's a little bit better at cutting off the ring, doesn't have the same, like, level of power, and the power and combinations and everything, but, um, the sharpness is so, so good, man, so good, and really, uh, you know, Marquez, especially when he was in that, that heated rivalry with Pacquiao, especially in the third and the fourth fight, he was older, his reflexes were a little bit slow, you know, Estrada is, uh, a lot more, closer to his prime, if not still in his prime, um, I th which I think he probably is, and so um, him in his prime versus uh, Suiza Kett, still pretty much in his physical prime. Um, maybe even getting better, both of them, actually. Um, I, think, I think that's going to be a hell of a fight, man. Uh, potential fighter of the year, maybe. Uh, potential performance of the year, potential fighter of the year um, at the end of the day when, it all, when it's all said and done. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, I definitely think there's, uh, there's uh, potential for any and all of those things, maybe. Maybe even knockout of the year, maybe. Very, very good fight. Very good performance for Estrada. I mean, Quadras, he can't, he can't really be too upset at himself. Um, if Suiza Kett does decide to drop the belt and fight against Inoue, I could very easily see an Estrada versus Quadras 2. Estrada versus Quadras 2 and Inoue versus Suiza Kett on Superfly Part 2, you know, on, on HBO. I could very easily see it happening. Um, if not, I could see Quadras maybe getting a shot at um, Inoue. I'm not sure if he'd get a shot at Kaya I think he might still be a little too dangerous for Eddie Hearn's taste. Uh, maybe Joran Akas, although Akas may have to fight his mandatory soon, either Johnny or Casimero. I think it's going to be actually Casimero. I'm pretty sure Casimero is his mandatory. Absolutely, you know. And then uh, Rashid Warner knows the number two, so uh, one of those guys may stand in the way. Uh, but Quadros versus Inoue is a very good fight. If Quadros manages the, to beat and upset the odds against Inoue, I mean, hey, uh, it won't be the first time he's spoiled the odds. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, except, um, although... Uh, you know, with Suiza Kett and with uh, Chocolatito, you know, it could be argued, I guess, especially in, more so in the Chocolatito fight, that he did spoil the odds there. But, uh, yeah, nothing to, nothing to be ashamed of about for Quadras. You know, he did, I think that there is an argument um, that he won the fight. But uh, I do think that he came up just short, basically. I thought that the knockdown made the difference. And uh, just the fact that Estrada was able to kind of mentally exhaust Quadras in those later rounds. Um, and uh, make it so that he just slightly pulled ahead from Quadras, and Quadras was the one playing catch-up in, in the championship rounds that ultimately um, told the tale of the day. And so that's, good. I guess, going to be it for this one, man. Um, Estrada's a pound-for-pounder, all right? So, I mean, I'm just putting it out there, period, point blank. That's, that's all there is to it. If, you know, if, he, if you don't think that he is, then, frankly, you don't know shit about boxing because <laughs> he's as good as anybody in there. So that's it, man. Peace.